Hey guys, Desoto Magic here, and as you may have guessed from the title, Mark Rosewater made a post on uh, Tumblr, and uh, it's hilarious because it's basically in a roundabout way admitting what I've been saying for years. And actually, this is the second time Wizards did this because the first time it was like, yeah, it turns out Standard has been in a bit of a bad place for a year, and I'm like, really? Because I get some backlash when I say that in videos, even though everybody knows it's true and attendance was down and sales were down and card values were down and they had to ban five cards. Oh, and GP and Pro Tour attendance was down. Oh, and customer satisfaction and card quality, and they hired two people to stop mistakes from being made in the R&D department. That was my favorite announcement ever. I'm going to find that page, print it off, and, like, hang it on my wall in a frame. So anyway, this one's about, we'll just say, the type of uh, player that I don't like. Now, he didn't actually use the N-word in the article. <laughs> I just realized that has two meanings. He didn't actually use the phrase net decker in the article. <laughs> Or the N word, but um, okay. I gotta I gotta clarify this because it seems like about once a month I have to clarify this for like new people or people who just didn't catch the last video that said it. A net decker is a person who plays to absolutely win and nothing else. All they care about is winning. They're obsessed with winning. They have to win, or it's going to drastically affect you know their mood and and everything for like the whole rest of the day. And they copy just the top tournament decks from the tournament results or from like you know the mtgo meta reports or just whatever they, they basically they they have to or they feel like they have to build the the top decks in the world and play with that because you know they want the best chance of winning and they're absolutely addicted to winning and their whole self-esteem is propped up by winning you know they're just weak pathetic shallow people who like to show off and and just you know they never have fun at FNM, and they they hate mirror matches. They love complaining, and it's just it, it's just all about winning and the accomplishment, and no fun allowed. This is a no fun zone at FNM. Now, perhaps a, a more appropriate term lately has been spike. Most people call them spikes, but spike used to imply like a card preference or like a deck style. It wasn't just I'm going to net deck. It's um, basically like, I like hyper powerful cards. I like knock you over combos. I like, you know, win on turn four decks. Like they like powerful mechanics and stuff. And they're just like, basically like not control players. Usually it's not like a gradual mind game. It's just like power. Actually, I totally might be messing that up and confusing it with Timmy's because I thought Timmy's liked the powerful cards. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Spikes are net deckers. Net deckers are spikes. Okay. That is not up for debate. That's who they are. That's their personality. That's how they play. They have to win, and they feel like they have something to prove. That is how Mark Rosewater de describes Spikes himself. Um, I'd say instead of just, oh, Spike net decker, okay, make the association in my mind, I would say Spike equals asshole. That's a more equivalent synonym. They're just terrible people. They're, they're miserable to play the game with. They make everything not fun, and everybody hates them. The only place that they fit in or belong is at, like, a GP or a Pro Tour, where it's like, yeah, there's prize money, and you paid for a plane ticket in a hotel. Like, I get it. And then, yeah, run the most powerful deck that you think is the most powerful. I mean, it's like, yeah, net deck it or come up with something better yourself. So that's a whole different scene, and that's the Spike's native habitat. And that's, you know, that's why I say just don't net deck at FNM and don't be a Spike. Don't be an asshole. And it's no secret that these types of people with these types of have-to-win attitudes who also, you know, commonly fall into patterns of cheating because they feel entitled to win, they feel like they should be winning, they will ruin entire local gaming stores. And I've heard plenty of stories. We're talking, like, on Twitter, people DMing me and stuff and emailing me different stories at least 30 different stories of like i used to go to this shop but it got taken over by net deckers or spikes or just dicks they forced everybody out the new players stopped showing up and then nobody it was just stale it was just like eventually they're gonna either go play a different game lose interest or die of old age so if you're not getting in new players because every single fnm is basically like a pro tour qualifier in everybody's opinion ha you thought that the subtle beeping in the background was pasta because I'm usually cooking pasta on a timer. Wrong. It's my laundry. So anyway, that's how an LGS dies because, you know, if they're driving away everybody with their unfriendly attitude and their unfriendly decks and unfriendly gameplay style, then where are you going to get new customers, new purchasers, you know? And, and you know that those types of people tend to buy their cards all together in one deck online, the end. They don't buy boxes. I mean, they're just, they're terrible. They're, everything about them is just bad. They're just bad for the shop. It's the reason that some LGSs that I've heard of split. Like, people have told me they split into, like, you know, modern FNM and standard FNM, or draft FNM and constructed FNM. 
or it's two standard constructed FMs and they just make anybody who's a complete tryhard asshole go into the other group. Like, for real, I've heard of that. They've been, like, sorting people. I think that, like, the one I heard of, they called it, like, the Junior League or the Beginner's League, but it was all, like, 30-year-olds. Like, there was, like, a couple 12-year-olds and stuff, but it was just, like, people who just wanted to play fun casual decks. So with this horrible problem that Wizards is very much aware of in mind, but they don't admit it because, you know, calling these people out would alienate them and make them want to quit the game because they'd be so deeply offended, and plus these people are touchy as hell. I don't know if you've ever uh, gotten on the bad side of some of these Spike players, but whoo-hoo, they are moody. Anyway, let's read what Mark Rosewater had to say in reference to the release of... Well, actually, no, he intros with this. So I'll just read it. Uh, the title is Unetiquette. Before the set releases tomorrow, I just wanted to say a quick word about something very important to Unstable. Play behavior. So he doesn't open with, oh, I'm so excited. Oh, it's so great to make another unset. I mean, he did say that in another post, so it would have been redundant. But no, he's just cutting right to the point like... Straight up, this is a public service announcement, and I'm going to get my point out. The end. Let's go. Uh, so he says, Magic can be a very competitive game, and that's great. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm hyper competitive. Uh, we have a giant organized play system set up to let people test their skills against one another. Unstable, though, is pushing towards the other end of the spectrum. Magic as a fun social activity. So I like that he is recognizing that it's a, it, it is very competitive. It's player versus player, and it's solely you. Like, you're the only one responsible. It's not a team sport. You built the deck. You're playing it. You're making the decisions. And besides bad draw luck and I, I'd say bad shuffling, but it's really just bad luck. You know, it's all up to you and your decisions. It's it's all you. I mean, that is very competitive, but a lot of people play Magic because it's fun. I mean, this isn't just like, you know, do you think pro tennis players play tennis because it's fun? No, they play to win and to be the best and just see if they can hone their skills and do just a little bit better than somebody else. And like to people like me, that is fun. Like I like hyper hard stuff. I used to be a StarCraft 1 competitive player. Oh, and two, technically, I was ranked very, very high, uh, and then I was just like, you know what, I'd rather just play a game that's fun, because it stopped being fun. Some of the top pro players had a surgery done to their elbows and fingers to modify them so that they could click faster with less wear to their joints. Okay, then it stopped being fun. I mean, I'm sure, like, Usain Bolt has hobbies other than running. You know, I don't think he considers, like, highly competitive training and running to be fun anymore. But of course, Mark is reminding people that some people do still play it as a, quote, fun social activity. And so Unstable isn't supposed to be highly competitive. I mean, it really was built as a competitive set, not just absolute chaotic madness and who knows who the winner is. I mean, it really, really drafted and played like a standard set just with some silliness added. I mean, the mechanics were balanced, they were real, the card costs were appropriate. I mean, it was a playable set and, it, and the winner was probably the person who built their deck better. So, you know... Like, don't mistake that. But I think the point he was really getting at by saying that is people might show up who only play Magic for fun. They don't want to be hyper competitive and they're like, oh, look, a fun set. But also the people who play every single week consistently are going to be there, too. So he felt the need to uh, release this little statement. That's at least my take on it. But I think with all I know about Wizards and, and the players in the community and what Mark said in the past, I think I'm reading into this pretty well. So he goes on to say, part of having the best unexperience is entering it with the idea that it's more about the experience than the outcome, which I say that about even standard FNM, so I am right with him on that one. Uh, yes, you can try to win, but please do so with the spirit of Silver Border in mind. See, that's why I almost wish they would have made it a little bit wackier to the point where I just really don't care who wins, but we were playing for packs. I mean, we were playing for, like, actual prizes at my FNM, so... You know, there's that. Uh, he goes on to say, when you come to a fork between doing something awesome or doing something boring but more likely to win, consider taking the awesome path. Now, see, that even I'd have a hard time with because, like I said, there's prizes on the line, and I know some people just pulled the prizes so that people wouldn't care as much. You know, like, who cares if they were ranked number one in an undraft? Dude, the guy sitting next to me did, I'll tell you that right now. At least he's, like, polite, but he's definitely one of the, like, try-hard, do-his-best type of players. And, like, I can respect that. Like I've said in the past... Uh, at my old LGS, there was, you know, like, we'd get 40 to 50 people for FNM. Like, it, it was a lot. And half would be complete dicks who are just try-hard jerks with all net decks, and they're all running the same $1,000 garbage. Uh, and then the rest were there to have fun and maybe win, maybe not, but just whatever, something to do. That or they were like me, and they were just there to test their new deck ideas and see if they could crush everybody with it. Because, you know, also like me, they commonly would. They'd come up with an idea that nobody else was playing, and it would just dominate because it would come so far out of left field, and it was very well built and very, you know, proper. 
So for the looser players and the younger players or people who are new or, you know, even a lot of the older players too, they'd just be like, yeah, I've been playing Magic for 24 years. I'm, I'm done being like hyper, hyper competitive. You know, I just play for fun now because I've been playing forever and I like the game. So we'd just, you know, slow it down if we hit the time limit, whatever. And, you know, give people a little bit of, oh, I missed a trigger, but it, we're forward one phase. You mind if I put it back or, you know. But then if somebody wanted to be like, okay, I've, I've been playing for years. I want to be an extremely good player. This is the only place where I can practice my extremely tight play so like we're going you know hard style on the rules and i don't mean just dropping a bass drum kick on every fourth beat oh and every fourth measure you got to put a roll that's totally hard style and i would be perfectly appropriate with playing along with whatever the person's preference was because you know i was a very good player i very much knew the rules and i made very few mistakes so if they wanted to play like that cool but if they wanted to play you know fast and loose and who cares and just kind of correct stuff on the fly and have fun um it still pretty much was the best man wins and the best deck wins it's just a little bit more fun a little bit more casual so i would match whatever their preference was but not everybody is quite as flexible as me a lot of new players less experienced players they will get very intimidated by somebody like oh no you took your finger off the land that is in your pool now really we're going like checkers no backsies finger off the card rules really but those two groups did not always get along, especially at my old LGS. So I guess Mark was like, hey, if you're from that other group of, of try-hard, you know, super strict players, um, and, and you're just going for the win, 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 win all the time, no matter what you're playing, draft, you know, sealed, constructed, modern, doesn't matter. You are going for the win, going for the throat, absolute, like you're going to second guess every decision and every single game is basically the final table at the World Tour or World Cup or I don't care. Well, then he goes on to say, and I do disagree with this, you win it unstable if you walk away having had a great time. Uh, no, you win it unstable if you walk away with some packs that you won. So maybe my LGS wasn't doing things the right way, but I don't think people would have paid, what, it was like double to triple the normal entry for FNM for the draft and then also not have prize support? Oh, and on top of it, you get to hold a bunch of valueless cards. <laughs> I mean, the lands are worth a bit, but yeah, I don't think people would have been thrilled with that. So people did try pretty hard. I mean, people were having fun and just making jokes like way more than a normal F&M. So people were having fun, but pretty much everybody there was playing to win. I mean, the, normally the people who don't care if they win at F&M didn't care if they won at Unstable. Or I should say standard constructed, not just at F&M. Um, and then the people who were super like hardcore and really liked to win were the exact same way with Unstable. But it worked because they weren't terrible people. They weren't impolite. They weren't like ruining everybody else's experience like my old LGS. Like if that's how they want to play, cool. I get it. I can identify with that. But at least they weren't being jerks about it. Nobody's calling a judge to say somebody misread an Unstable card and then trying to get their like turn ended artificially or get some ruling or a game loss. Yeah. Yes, people commonly did that at my old LGS. I mean, not for like an unset, obviously. Well, they probably did actually when the last unset came out. They probably did do that. But for standard, they'd be, you know, kind of, what do they call that? Like side shooting or uh, there's some term for it. So anyway, he says, yeah, you know, you, you win if you have a good time, whatever. So please just enter into this experience with the mindset that it's okay to not always play optimally if doing so creates a fun story and would lead to having an overall better experience. Trust me, magic will return to its normal, and then in parentheses, for some competitive mindset soon enough. In my opinion, he did not throw spikes under the bus anywhere near hard enough, but if you offend them, they will get all mad, stomp their feet, and go play a different game. Because like I said, they're moody, they're sensitive, and their entire sense of self-worth is based on winning at a card game. So basically, if I were to translate this from, you know, politically correct PR speak from somebody who knows what he's doing and knows not to say something stupid, unlike some people who work at Wizards and have Twitter accounts, <coughs> Aaron Forsyth. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I don't know what that was. Uh, that coughing. I should edit that out. You know what's funny is he either has me blocked or he really doesn't tweet much anymore. It really could be either. But if I were to translate this into normal English, hey, asshole unfriendly players, stop being assholes for a second. This is supposed to be fun and more people are going to be showing up that want to have fun because the set's supposed to be fun for God's sake. You ruin everybody else's time every single FM to the point where you're almost single-handedly putting entire LGSs out of business, so could you pump the brakes for one damn draft and let people have fun playing Magic for once? Oh my god, I hate you all. 
That's at least my take on the way that he would have written it if he was a little bit less polite. I mean, it's also pretty much the way I would have written it. So I think we're both getting at the same point here. And like I said, I, I'm reading pretty far into this, but you know how polite and proper he has to be with everything he says. You don't want to offend people on either side. It was just a friendly reminder to, you know, tone down the, the assholery for a second. And I appreciate what he said. I mean, as much as I'd love him to just come out and be like, can you guys stop ruining the game and our company and our income and driving away players? Oh my God, I hate you all so much. Like as much as I wish that he would come out and say that, it's never going to happen. But that's why open, independent, and non-WOTC affiliated people like me are creating things for you on YouTube. That's why when MTG Line made that video about like, why don't they just make all the major MTG YouTubers and content creators into employees? They should be. Yeah, cause then I'd have to watch what I'd say and release crap like this. If their like PR and marketing and image department had to go through everything I say and all my scripts for videos before I release them, they would quit their jobs while simultaneously developing some kind of chronic migraine problem. I'm not Wizards of the Coast PR friendly. So yes, instead of bringing us all in on one, one big blanket, which honestly they kind of do just with, you know, kind of influence and buddy buddy and, you know, nod and wink and, you know, also outright telling people do not collab with this person, do not speak of them, do not mention them, do not reply to them. You must also blacklist them. Like they have word for word said that allegedly. So they got their little group of, you know, wizards approved people and they get, you know, special little bonuses, free product, free promos, you know, cards and, and, and you know, free plane tickets once in a while, free publicity. So they basically are employees already. They're just not for legal and tax reasons. Um, and those are the people that people consistently have problems with. They don't like the biased report they don't like what they're saying. They don't like that their content doesn't reflect reality. They don't like that they ignore entire issues that the community is very buzzing about. So no, we don't need 15 more Mark Rosewaters releasing, you know, polite crap like this. Like I'm not edgy or offensive for the sake of being edgy or offensive. I just keep it real and tell the truth unapologetically, at least the way I see it. So thanks, Mark, for reminding people to stop being complete dicks to each other at FNM and putting the spikes in their place. I think they reading it they read between the lines and knew what you were getting at. And that's why I had to share it all with you guys because it's pretty much the greatest thing I've read from uh, his Tumblr blog ever. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.